Hey everyone, Snowby here with a few tips on playing Alpha 21, just to help you with a few words of possible wisdom and techniques you may not know yet. First up, as you know, police cars are a potential hazard. If you break in with a lockpick, you should not have a problem. However, if you do literally break in with a pickaxe or some other tool or weapon, an alarm will go off and there is a chance it will spawn in zombies that are a higher stage than you. Of course, the cop cars are often worth it as the loot can be pretty good for ammo and weapon parts, but you really should try to avoid those whites and cops that will spawn in. So using a lockpick is better for your health. Here is my tip. Instead of dealing with each cop car one at a time, and this means a lockpick or using a jailbreaker just for one cop car, instead wait until you have explored that particular town. Mark the police cars on the map and once you get at least a bicycle, then buy your jailbreaker. Eat the jailbreaker and quickly go to all the cars on your map, breaking into each one. This is the most cost effective one jailbreaker and it means you will be able to easily and safely get all the loot from those cars in one quick swoop. Another tip is if you really want to cheese the cop car, then just break in. The alarm will go off and if any ferals do start rocking up, then just ride off with your vehicle and leave them in the dust. Come back two or three minutes later and the demons from hell will have despawned. The alarm may still be going off, but you can just unjam the vehicle and collect your loot. Easy. As you know, there is a new feature in the game. After opening rubbish bags and nests, they will vanish. Some players have moaned that this means they can't re-loot nests anymore as they are lost for good and won't respawn any eggs anymore like they did in Alpha 20. A way to combat this is the new chunk reset setting. I did a test on a 10 day setting. I looted all the eggs in a particular area, I marked them with blocks and on the map, then pushed off and just over 10 days later I returned. All the nests were back. I can't say they were exactly in their places as all the blocks I placed were gone. After all this is a chunk reset so it is like being back on day one before you actually entered that location. However, there were nests around the places I'd added a map marker so it appears as if all the nests had actually returned and I could loot them again. So this is an option if you would like to get your nest back for looting. That is if you don't mind the complete reset. Just make sure you have a bedroll or claim block to prevent your base from being removed as well. However, I will say this. Chicken eggs are pretty much available all over the place, especially when you need them most, which is, well, at the beginning of the game. Your early foods like boiled eggs or bacon and eggs are catered for with numerous nests. As you progress through the game, you need these eggs a lot less. Even the pumpkin cheesecake food, which gives you a bartering buff, is not used all the time. One of the main objectives of Seven Days to Die is to explore. This is part of the game and so exploring new locations where there are new nests should mean you don't have a problem with eggs in the mid and late game. So overall, I don't believe the lack of nests in close proximity to your base is a major problem. But if you want it, you can use the chunk reset. Alpha 21 lighting is pretty amazing. However, it does have a particular mechanic that can get you in trouble, and that is darkness, my old friend. You can be wandering around a POR and even during the day if it starts to rain or the weather becomes overcast and hell, it will then get pretty dark. Now, the problem with the darkness is that it is so quick. So within two or three seconds, it can change. This is some footage from an early game of mine. I came up the stairs and you can see it is quite light. I open my inventory to do something and within a few seconds later it is pitch black. Even turning around where I thought I'd come from was too dark. Now, don't get me wrong, I think the new lighting in Alpha 21 is pretty exquisite. Just look at how the light appears in this POR and looks like you are wandering through a horror game scene. Simply beautiful and makes those dark areas more scary. So, before you are able to get a helmet light mod, my tip for you is this. In the early game, carry some form of torch around with you. Just in case, you just never know where you're going to be when the lights will suddenly go out. Believe me, I learnt this the hard way. Ah... Uh. I'm trying to kill zombies that I can't see in the dark. Ah. 
A lot of players these days don't play stealth. I am unsure if it is the problems that stealth has had since Alpha 20, but I have a suggestion for some of those nights that you just may be sitting around and doing nothing, while waiting for 4am to come around. In the first week, most players will cower in their bases at night. For obvious reasons, you don't want to be out fighting ferals and zombies that are much faster than you. Now, most of us don't play with feral sense on, and this tip is not for those players. However, an alternative thing to do at night is roam the streets killing zombies and never get hit. This is a character I created to show this off. Using a primitive bow, some stone arrows, no points into sneak damage, no points into from the shadows. I have no armor except for a helmet that I gave myself. Now, this is how the zombies react when you are sneaking around at night. Go into crouch and sneak around. Shoot a zombie from a reasonable distance and you will of course get a sneak damage hit. Now, stay crouched and stay still. Notice the zombie's reaction. They run initially looking for you, then stop very soon after and you can now back away. You don't want to shoot them again while the zombie is so close to you. With some distance you can now shoot again. So my tip is to take a walk on the dark side at night. Get out there, crouch, stay in the shadows, shoot, stay still if you don't get the instant kill and wait for the zombie to stop his search, which will be in just a few seconds. Back away, careful not to step on any noise traps, and shoot again. Each time you hit the zombie, you will always get a sneak damage hit. This technique has an extremely low chance of detection, and you can generally roam freely at night seeking and destroying. And I did this without any stealth-related skills, equipment, and just a bow and stone arrows. I would suggest you put points into the From the Shadow skill. With at least three points here, the zombies can get very close to you and they still won't even detect you. So, this is an alternative to just staying at your base during the night. You can get away with murder and the zombies won't even spot you. When you wake up on day one and finish your initial quests, we have seen a lot of complaints about how far the first trader can be. Not everyone has had this disadvantage, but most of us playing in the past week have now been victims of the long run to the trader. More than a kilometer or a mile is not uncommon. I realize that this is quite different from what you may be used to, but I personally hope it is not nerfed and made easier. This is a survival game after all, and if this mechanic does stick around and become part of the normal gameplay, I say that we should embrace it. So my tip for you is this. Use the longer trader run to your advantage. Don't just run in a wild panic. Use the time to pick up items that you are probably going to need, such as chopping up stumps and looking for honey. With increased critical chance in Alpha 21, you are likely going to need the honey sooner than you think. Also on the way, get some wood, stones, and of course, start raiding those nests for eggs. Remember, eggs do not give dysentery, so they can be eaten even without being cooked. Now, a tip that has been nerfed. Once you get a bicycle or transportation, just ride around for a day picking up books and magazines from all the post boxes and newsstands that you can find. As I said, it has actually been nerfed in the most recent patch, still it is a valid tip. In my testing after the nerf, post boxes outside a house now mainly give paper, but they still provide the occasional skill magazine and books. As much as post boxes are mainly a bust, newsstands do seem to give quite a few magazines, albeit considerably fewer than before. So, as a tip, it is still in your interest to get on your bike and ride, finding all the post boxes and newsstands that you can for their loot. Water has been a bit of an up and down with Alpha 21. Drinking straight murky water can lead to dysentery, so this is where the water purifier mod for your helmet comes in handy. However, there is still a problem. There is a scarcity of murky water and using it just to drink in the early game seems a bit of a waste as you really are trying to balance cooking water with water for glue. So you tend to find the helmet purifier mod a waste as you really want to be boiling your murky water, not drinking it. What many players are forgetting is that there are rivers and swimming pools and many water sources dotted around the map. Equip your water purifier mod and stand close to the water. You don't have to be in the water, but just very close and looking down at it. Wait a second for the press E text to appear and then press E and you will drink water. Remember, you can't have a weapon or 
tool in your hand. So use an open slot in your toolbar and drink to your heart's content. This will save your precious murky water jars and you won't need to drink water anymore that should be used for glue and duct tape. Here is a bonus tip for water at your base. Craft a bucket and find a water source to fill it with. Dig a hole, you can dig a bigger hole if you wish, but for this purpose we're just going to dig one hole to show off the tip. Take your water bucket and fill the hole with murky water. You do this by right clicking the bucket in your toolbar. Make sure that the water purifier mod is in your helmet and now drink and drink and drink to your heart's content. You can easily get up to a 20 minute buff of water just by drinking for a few seconds and it will slowly trickle down. If you are in a party and money is scarce, you could even share the water purifier mod between party members just at least to get a drink without some people using the water jars. This hole is not going anywhere, so when returning to the game after restarting, the water will still be there and you don't have to ever touch your precious water jars again while back at your base. So enjoy overindulging on all your water. Finally, the skill charismatic nature is usually considered a waste of time if you are not in a party of friends. Even when in a party, you must be in close range to the team leader for it to work. So most of the time players don't care much for it due to its short range and it is of course useless for solo play. However, in Alpha 21 there appears to be a huge change, or it could just be a bug. I am thinking it is maybe a bug. When one member in a party specs points into charismatic nature, the range on the buff is infinite for other party members. So I am 7 kilometers or about 4 miles away from our team leader, but I still have the buff. With max level 5, this means I always have an additional point for all my attributes. Plus, all the extra speed that I get, the less damage, the less bleeding, including the loot buffs and the damage increases no matter where I am on the map. I do think this is a bit OP'd, so likely a bug, but we will have to see if this gets nerfed or not. Still, those who are playing co-op, it makes it worthwhile for now for someone to spec into it, and helps others to be a lot more stronger no matter where they are on the map. Right, a huge thank you for making it to the end, and I hope you got something from the various tips. Thanks for watching, and I will of course see you in the next one.